Well, hello everyone. Now today I want to talk to you guys about dead time. Now, you've probably heard me say that before, and you've probably heard other people in other videos talk about dead time. So what is it, and why do we need it? Why do we care? Dead time refers to what's used in bridge circuits. Half bridge circuits, full bridge circuits, or three-phase bridge circuits. And basically, it, these are the kind of circuits that you would need to use if you wanted to make some kind of inverter. If you wanted to make uh, an inverter that went from, like, let's say, 12 volts DC to 240 or 120, whatever you've got, or if you were making a motor controller, something of that nature, you would need to use a bridge circuit. But a bridge circuit is kind of a dangerous circuit. And let me show you why, right here up on the screen. You'll see we've got a transistor that's connected to the negative side of the circuit and then we've got one connected to the positive side of the circuit, right? And there's a link between them. Now that link between them is where alternating current will come out, okay? So when the transistor is as connected to the negative side, when that switches on, the output's going to go negative. And when the positive one switches on, the output's going to go positive. So that's how we get alternating current, right? But both of these can't be on at the same time or otherwise there's going to be a really obvious short circuit. So dead time refers to the time delay between the switching action of the two. So in other words, when the negative one turns off, the positive one can't immediately come on. There needs to be a delay in there when they're both off. Because the thing is, even if you turn one of them off, it still takes some time for it to turn off before the other one can come on. And the reason why this is a problem is because some switches, IGBTs, do it more so than the other types of transistors they actually turn on faster than they turn off. So as you can see, this is going to be a big problem. So they, they've come up with a solution, like I was saying, the time delay, and they call it dead time. All right, let me just give you guys a good example here. Now we have an actual transistor here. This is an IGBT. Now this is a CM300HA-24H. So basically, this is a 300 amp IGBT module, 1200 volts blocking voltage. And I have the data sheet here open. And on their test, they have run it at 600 volts and the current of 300 amps. And they're saying in the data sheet here, this is for a resistive load, by the way, they're saying the turn on delay time is 250 nanoseconds and the turn off delay time is 350 nanoseconds. That doesn't necessarily mean that if you have zero dead time, there's going to be a problem because there's other things to consider. But what it does mean is there's a time delay of 250 nanoseconds, not very much, when you tell it to turn on before it actually starts responding, right? But if you want it to turn off, let's say you tell it to turn off, the time delay is going to be a little bit longer. It's going to be 350 nanoseconds. So let's say you use this, two of these, in a half bridge circuit. There's about 100 nanoseconds uh, discrepancy there. So if you told one t to turn off, and you told the other one to turn on, that other one that you told to turn on, it will start responding 100 nanoseconds faster than the other one would respond to the turn off command. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a good number for the amount of dead time you should use, but that's just a good example of what I'm saying here, that these transistors can actually turn on faster than they turn off. And so that's why we really need to think about dead time if we're going to use these in a bridge circuit. So now that you know that you need dead time if you want to use a half bridge circuit, now you have to determine just exactly how much dead time you need. In other words, what would be a good time delay when both transistors are off? What amount of time should we tell both transistors to be off before we can start switching them again? So a lot of times I say the best place to look for information is a data sheet, but in this case that may not necessarily be true. The only time the data sheet is going to be a good reference for the dead time is going to be if you're running the IGBTs or whatever kind of transistor you have in the same conditions that they are. You see, the delay time and the rise and fall time, all that changes. Basically, how fast it switches on and off, that all changes depending on the condition that it was in. And like I was saying, this is true more for IGBTs than it is for other kinds of transistors the best thing to do is test them in your conditions. So again, if you're running in the same conditions that the data sheet is, you can go off of that. 
But if you're not, if you're using an inductive load, for example, or if you're using a different current, a different gate resistor, different voltage, then you really should test it, and I'll show you how. All right, so this is the test setup, okay, guys? Uh, but I'm just going to show you guys a diagram of how to set this up on the screen. It'll be easier than me trying to explain all of it and point it all out. So anyways, yeah, the point of the test setup is to measure how long it takes for the IGBT to turn on and to turn off. And the most valuable tool in this whole test setup will be an oscilloscope. It's going to be extremely difficult, maybe impossible to do it without one. So let's just check it out. All right, now as you can see, we have two traces that we're scoping here. Uh, the first one here, this is the gate voltage waveform. And the other one here is the IGBT at turn on. And you'll notice right here in the gate voltage waveform, there's a little knee. And that corresponds to the IGBT threshold voltage. So every transistor, that's like a field effect transistor, it has a gate that's uh, driven by voltage rather than current. There's a point where you're not at full turn on voltage yet, but it's where that the transistor's gate starts to respond. And the threshold voltage I looked up for this particular IGBT, it falls anywhere between 4 volts and 7.5 volts. And that knee is right, right around that point, and it's going to correspond to the threshold voltage where it starts to turn on. Now, as you can see, there's a delay between this knee and here, where the IGBT actually starts to turn on. And from what I'm seeing, it looks like that's about 100 nanoseconds. But it's a little bit longer than that before it actually turns on because as you can see, this is where it kind of starts to turn on, but it still takes some time. It takes about 75 more nanoseconds before it actually fully turns on and we get any uh, meaningful current flowing through it. So what I was looking up earlier, it said it had a turn on delay of about 250 nanoseconds. It looks to be about right, but as you can see, the circuit has significant inductance. It looks like it... Uh, rings on for quite some time here. So the next thing that we need to do is figure out how long it takes to turn off. So we've, like I said, it kind of looks something like 175 nanoseconds. And now we're going to have to see exactly how long it takes to turn off. So we're going to have to change the scope around a minute. All right, now we've changed around the oscilloscope so we can see the IGBT at turn off. Now I apologize if the screen flashes. I think my backlights are going out on the oscilloscope. But anyways, you can see here, this is the IGBT at turnoff. This is the gate voltage waveform, and this is the IGBT at turnoff. And you can see, just like in turn on, there's a little knee right here. And down here, it kind of looks like the voltage starts changing on the IGBT. So, again, it's like, what's the delay? What's the difference between this knee here and when we actually start to see turn off? over here and it looks like it's about 200 nanoseconds so it seems like it's just a little bit longer for it to turn off than for it to turn on so now that we know it, it seems like it's 175 nanoseconds maybe to turn on and about 200 to turn off so what what does our um, dead time then need to be alright so now after we've determined how long it's going to take for the IGBT to turn on and how long it's going to take for it to turn off, we can kind of get a general idea of what our dead time needs to be. Now, if we want to just account for the turn off, let's say we did 200 nanoseconds for turn off. So that way, when we send the command, we wait 200 nanoseconds, and then we are going to assume that will be enough for the IGBT, give it enough time to turn off. But we also have to consider that there's ringing in there. So even after the IGBT is turned off, the, the voltage is going to bounce a while. So if we want to smooth it out a little bit, we can add the two together, right? The turn off time and the turn on time. And in our case, we could say it'd probably be somewhere around 400 nanoseconds, which sounds about right. Uh, because what I've heard, and this is just very general, some people make high power inverters and they say a uh, thousand nanoseconds is a good place to start. Uh, but because this was such a low power test, probably 400 nanoseconds right around there uh, makes sense. So anyways, guys, uh, you'll have to do your own testing, come to your own conclusions. Again, it depends a lot on the type of switch and the type of current you know you're running through it. And that's why I say uh, test it. 
and do the measurements yourself and see what you come up with because what you see online uh, that might be valid for only certain conditions, your conditions are going to vary. Now, what do you do if you don't have an oscilloscope? Well, the next best thing is simulation. Now, a lot of companies uh, really provide some really good simulators uh, for their products to give you kind of a general idea, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of like what about you're going to get. Uh, but yeah, it'll probably be a little bit different, but it might be close enough. So anyways, guys, uh, next video, I think what we're going to do is uh, dead time generation, how to generate the dead time. So anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next one.